All right, I think everything is working correctly. We've got NVIDIA broadcast set up, redid my OBS. I've got a capture card and everything going on, so uh, shouldn't be any more latency in streams now. And so hopefully everything works technically. It's kind of weird having two different computers connected together to, to run all this, but got to get more and more professional, right? So just let me know if everything sounds good. Hopefully there should be like noise cancellation and things like that so that uh, you're not hearing so many clicks and all this other stuff. So um, we're going to try and make this stream uh, pretty quick. And so just uh, wanting to make sure that we can teach you uh, this theory that I call SimTuition. Um, so this is going to be a stream basically telling you how simulations work. Um, helping you gain the intuition you need to make anything that you want um, and then just learning how to uh, navigate through Embergen and things like that. Uh, this stream isn't actually specific to Embergen. We're going to be using Embergen, but you can apply this knowledge in any other tool uh, that deals with simulations. So uh, really, really quite awesome. And uh, just give me one more second here. I need to uh, reset up my second monitor here uh let's see okay cool all right so we're all good um so other than that um let's go ahead and get started here and so yeah we're gonna be teaching sim tuition so we can go ahead and move on to the presentation all right so this is going to be gaining sim tuition. I'm going to try and keep this under an hour, and uh, going to be watching the chat. So just let me know if uh, anything weird comes up. So cool. So gaining sim tuition, uh, simulation theory, intuition, and processing is what we're going to be going over. First things first. Available now. Fifty fire presets available at djangofx.com/marketplace. Go get all the fire that you need uh, for presets for Embergen. Really cool. So, uh, what is a fluid simulation in visual effects? And I promise the slides will be more exciting than this every time. So, uh, a simulation is an imitation of volumetric or liquid phenomenon found in reality. Uh, both smoke and liquids are considered fluids in this case. Um, they're typically simulated on a computer with authorable parameters to re reproduce real-life phenomenon. And uh, other than that, uh, generally incompressible for simplification purposes. Uh, liquids, as far as I know, are incompressible uh, in real life. Uh, but smoke and things like that, you can compress it because it's air. But for our purposes of simulating, it's typically uh, incompressible. Um so yeah, and then here is an example of a fluid simulation uh, made with Embergen. And so we've got a bunch of fire, you know, going around. We've got smoke. We've got a bunch of turbulence. Um, you know, there's a lot of vortices. The flames are dissipating. You know, smoke is dissipating. The flames are giving off light, all this other stuff. So this is an example of, of kind of what a fluid simulation is and, and kind of the things that you'll, you'll be able to create after the stream, hopefully. So if there's one thing that you take away from this whole stream, and we'll come back to this point, uh, if there's one thing you can take away from it, it's create the right conditions and you will achieve the envisioned result. Everything with simulations depends on your starting conditions and the ones that are um, concurrent throughout the simulation's life and, and whatever. So definitely keep this in mind. So what makes a fluid simulation work in the first place? So there's three main parts to a simulation, advection, projection, and sourcing. Advection and projection are hard-coded, and they're in a black box. I think with things like Houdini and stuff like that, it's not a black box. You can actually go and, you know, alter the, the code and stuff like that behind it. In Embergen, you can't, 
and there's honestly not much reason to. The, the reasons are generally few and far between that you would want to actually change this base code because it's really the code that just tries to mimic reality. So advection makes everything move around and projection is what makes everything swirl. And then these are kind of in a closed loop. So advection is going to go to projection then projection is going to go to advection, so on and so forth. And then we have user derived parameters which are sourcing. So it's all the initial and ongoing condition, conditions for your simulation. So you've got component injection, which is like smoke, fuel, temperature, things like that. And then you've got vorticity, uh, weight, diffusion, which is also known as viscosity. You've got buoyancy and a, a slew of other things uh, that are um, derived from, say, your simulation node. And we'll, we'll go over all that here uh, more. So now um we're back at projection and advection and so we've got a, a great video here from uh one of our lead programmers morton and uh, he's actually the co-founder too of jenga fx and so whenever you push a spoon through a fluid it creates a localized force this force then spreads or projects through the fluid the fluid displaced by the spoon has to find a new place to go and as it moves, it pushes the other fluid out of the way. Meanwhile, the space left by the initial displacement needs to be filled, causing the fluid to circulate or curl around. And so now you know why fluid curls. You know why smoke curls. You know why as things rise, uh, air, so say smoke, the smoke is displacing uh, the, the other air that it hasn't gone to yet. And then that displacement needs to be filled and so that causes smoke and fire and things like that to curl around. So this is the projection and advection steps of simulations and this is what's black boxed. These parameters very rarely are going to change but we do have some access to the black box through the simulation node um, to, to you know amplify things or multiply against certain features and things like that to kind of make the simulation behave uh, the way that we want to uh, make it behave. So a summary, uh, projection and infection, uh, fluid curls and forms vortices and eddies, uh, like you see in the background here, due to projection and infection steps. This work is done for you in the background. So now moving on to uh, some of the important stuff. Uh, sourcing, so influencing your simulations. So in Embergen, there's four main node types that are going to allow you to influence your simulation. The first one is an emitter node. Um, or emitter nodes, because you can also do particles or volumetric injection. And so uh, you can inject fuel, smoke, temperature, flames, and pressure, and all kind of other stuff, you know, that are based on input shapes um, uh, that are masked. So uh, you can go ahead and just, you know, inject whatever you want. You have your smoke, you have your density. So smoke is also called density. You have temperature, flames, and uh, yeah, so that's your, your emitter node. And then here are some examples of that. So number one is a sphere emitting chist density or chist smoke. And then number two is a cube that's emitting flames and temperature. And then that's combusting and then producing smoke and so on and so forth because of the combustion solver in the simulator. And then number three is a torus that's emitting particles. And so these are just various emitters and they're actually running in the same simulation domain. Uh, and this is just an example of like what you can do with emitters. So we are sourcing it and then uh, they're doing their thing. So the second thing are collider nodes. They create collision objects for your simulation to interact with. And so here's an example of colliders. So you've got a sphere that's, you know, moving on uh, from an oscillator node uh, and it's, you know, interacting with the smoke. And this is actually uh, from our brand new uh, collision build uh, so that colliders no longer eat smoke. We have a proper pressure system and things like that. And you'll see a little bit of that as a teaser um, uh, once we're actually inside of Ambergen today. So, and then we have a torus at the bottom that is also colliding with, uh, you know, the emitter and it's kind of pushing the smoke uh, out of the, the center of that torus. So further, uh, our third thing that we can do is we have force nodes. And these are artificial sources of noise, tor uh, turbulence, uh, vortices, and a whole lot more. 
And so here's an example of a force node. You can see my cool little animation. Um, so we've got this little smoke tornado and then the arrows represent the force direction and, and kind of how it's going. And this is with a line force. Uh, and we took the twist parameter and uh, increased that. And that's going to twist your smoke around. And so we're actually emitting from, I think, I believe just a small torus at the bottom. And we simply have some density. And then the uh, line force does the rest of the work for us. And then finally, we have the simulation node. And that allows for tuning how the simulation uh, actually behaves. And so it's going to also tell us how large the do domain is. And so we have some cool parameters like vorticity, which is an amplification of existing vortices. We have smoke weight, which is a downward force based on smoke density. We have buoyancy, which is a multiplier for an upward force based on temperature and so on and so forth. We have, you know, other things like, that you can do uh, like dissipation, diffusion and stuff like that. But uh, that's all handled by the simulation node. And so some key things about the simulation node, uh, sourcing your bounds or your domain, the, the terms are interchangeable. So in this case, this is 256 voxels wide by 256 voxels tall. And then the depth is 256 voxels as well. And we have this cool little explosion kind of sitting in the middle of all that. And so that is your bounds. That's the area that you can simulate. And so this is, it's going to be a bit different. Uh, once we have sparse embergen, where all of this will be calculated for you, um, for your bounds and your domain and all that other stuff. But for now, it's something that you have to set manually. Um, and the bigger your bounds are, the more computation power you're going to have to use. And so another thing is smoke weight. So if you want downward velocity on your smoke, so think dry ice, uh, you the equation for that uh, velocity is going to be smoke weight, which is um, a parameter in the simulation node, times your density of the smoke, which is controlled by the emitter. So that's how much smoke you're emitting. So smoke weight uh, parameter times your uh, smoke emission rate, more or less, equals the downward velocity. And you can have other velocities cancel it out, like if you're also emitting temperature, um, and then you have buoyancy, that's going to try and rise. And so those two parameters are going to uh, fight each other. And so then here's buoyancy. So it's an upward velocity uh, that's controlled by the simulation node. And that equation is simply temperature, which is also controlled by the emitter, and then times buoyancy. And so that's going to make your smoke rise. So smoke weight is going to make it fall. Buoyancy is going to make it rise. So here's kind of a sourcing breakdown of your components and then the simulation. So here's how they interact. So you've got your emitter nodes, which are invisible matter and visible matter, invisible being temperature, and then visible being your, you know, potentially fuel if you are rendering it, um, but that could also be invisible. You've got your density, so smoke, and then you've got um, uh, flames in the odd case of particles, which can actually inject flames directly. You've got your collider nodes, which are just collision objects. So that could be an imported mesh, a shape from Embergen, or even uh, the bounds on the domain uh, for your bounding box. You can have those be colliders uh, coming up in uh, Embergen 1.1. And so that should be released uh, hopefully within the next month or so, I would think. Um, could be wrong on that, but we're, we're going to try and push that out as soon as possible because um, we're going to be using that build today. Then we also have uh, force nodes, which we learned are just artificial velocity, and we'll go over that really in depth too. So then you have your, your process components, and it says processes components that should probably actually just be process components. So you have your simulation node, so you can amplify vorticity, you can create forces based on your components right here. You can uh, do dissipation and uh, diffusion based on your components, which are created here. And then it uh, runs your black box projection and advection calculations. So pretty neat. And then inside of Embergen, these are the nodes that I'm talking about. You've got your forces, which are blue, your emitters, which are green, colliders are red, and your simulation node is pink. And you'll notice that I've tried to color code it to match. So yay me. So that's that. And then one other important step, we are not going to touch on this in the stream because we have limited time, but a great step that is 
just as important as all this other stuff for the intuition of how the simulation is going to behave is your rendering. So after each fr frame of the fluid simulation is calculated, we need to see it. So we can do all this stuff, but never render any of it. I mean, you can run all these calculations and not render anything and like, it'll still be happening, right? But we actually want to see that result. And this result is actually from Embergen, really cool fire shader I've been working on. Um, but one cool thing about Embergen in particular, and that other tools don't do, is Embergen is the first tool to do the final simulation and final render at the same time. And in most cases, it's in real time. So this result right here is actually running in real time in the background or whatever uh, while you're working. So you get to see the full quality of the simulation while it's running. In other tools, you just can't get that result. So I told you we'd be coming back to this. So how do you create the right conditions to achieve the Envision results? Here is a beautiful picture that I found on Unsplash.com. This is a manhole, and it has uh, steam coming out of it. And uh, we'll, we'll go over some of the key pieces of how would we recreate this. Oh, wait, there's a kawaii smoke person. I didn't mean to show that. Okay, so back to it. How do we actually make this? So here's the emitters in this case. So we're, we're taking reality, and we're going to break it down as if it's a simulation. So we've got two emitting points here on this, if we were to break this down. And then I'm thinking that there's probably a noise force that's masked by that emitter. And so it's, it's making the smoke spew everywhere and all this other stuff. But what's next? So there's also probably a line force in reality blowing this. It could be wind. So in the simulation, we also have wind. But I'm thinking that there's a line force here pushing this smoke away from the original emitter. We're also emitting temperature, right? But with temperature... Uh, it doesn't do anything by itself because there's a multiplier that goes with it, which is buoyancy. So we have simulation buoyancy, and that's going to make our smoke rise, right? We, we learned that just a little bit ago. So that's going to make our smoke rise. And then we have vorticity. This is what's going to give us, you know, all these, you know, crispy little details and things like that. We're going to amplify the base simulation and give us a bit more detail, make the edges crispier, you know, um, give us all these cool little... Uh, you know, turbulent details and, and things like that. So without it, our smoke would be smooth, but I'm thinking that there's probably some vorticity here. And then we also have dissipation. By, by say, I don't know, what is that, three feet, five feet? The smoke is disappearing. The steam is disappearing. So we're going to need some dissipation. And then I'm thinking there's probably a collider. I don't think the smoke's passing through the ground. So we could just do this with um, in the force tab of the simulation uh, uh, node we have a, uh, a collider we can climb with the ground. And so that is pretty much it for the slides. We're going to go to full cam now. So overall, before we dive into Embergen, was this helpful? I, I'm thinking about doing this uh, format uh, more through, you know, uh, pre-recorded tutorials and things like that. But I really want to try and do uh, some breakdowns of uh, real life phenomenon and then break it down into the key pieces um, for what the simulation would need. And one of the cool things about this is if we actually here, here we go. Wrong one. All right. There we go. Cool. So one of the cool things about this one is uh, and I know my camera's in the way, but that's fine. Is if you look here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parameters. That's it that there's only seven parameters that you would need to change to make this smoke. It's extremely simple. And in Embergen, it has a ton of parameters, but the vast majority of them you, you, you need in edge cases and things like that. And that's where using the software comes from. Um, or, or, and you'll get that experience and things like that. But overall, like you can get 90% of the way with just seven parameters. So, other than that, looks like really helpful and clear. And so this is part of the, the intuition. You know, after the stream, go look at an explosion or something like that. Go look at, uh, you know, a simple smoke plume or, or whatever. And then just draw on it. Try and think about, like, what those things are. What are the forces that are acting on that? You know, so we've got, you know, if it's hot, it's going to rise, typically. You know, if if the uh, 
the matter is, you know, uh, less dense than air in some cases. Uh, you know, if it's more dense, you know, that's what causes stuff like dry ice to fall down and things like that. And so we have like smoke weight, we have dissipation to play with. We can think about vorticity, buoyancy, um, you know, what forces could be, you know, acting on this and, and so on. Somebody said, what are eddies? As far as I know, an eddy is more or less the same thing as a vortice. So, you know, let's say that we've got this little, little thing right here, my little EpiPen. And so things that have this curling motion, uh, I believe that that's an eddy. I think that eddies and vortices are kind of um, uh, interchangeable or like on, what is it, Jupiter, I believe. There's like a big, you know, hurricane thing. That's just one giant eddy. So it's like the whole uh, motion. And so there we go. Jason uh, coming in clutch with uh, what an eddy is. So there we go. And so one last thing that I want to... Uh, to mention is if you go to, so I'll bring it up here in another tab real quick, and then we're going to hop into Embergen, is that if you go to um, jengafx.com and then Tech Insights, so we'll, we'll bring this over, voila. All right, so if you go to jengafx.com, Tech Insights, uh, and then we have this projection article by our co-founder Morton, who does a lot of the math in Embergen. Unfortunately, some of the videos are broken, but you can do open video in new tab and then that will, or copy video address and then go to it. That'll actually show the video. But this is a very deep dive on, um, actually, hang on, here we go. Presentation. Here we go. I brought it back up. So you go to jingfx.com, tech insights, projection, and then uh, we've got this. You can see it's a very long article, very in depth about what the projection steps do and things like that. Uh, if you really want to learn the deep, deep technicals of how Embergen does it and things like that, but that is far beyond even my scope. So, so there's that. So I'm going to come back to full cam for a second, and then we're going to go into Embergen, and we're going to start. Once you see this, I think you're just going to go, man, all these pieces, they just make sense. It's just intuitive. And so a lot of tutorials miss this part with what I'm calling sim tuition. They say, well, change this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, and you change these 20 things, and then you're going to get this cool explosion. And afterwards, you go, cool, I made it the exact same explosion that they did, but I don't know anything about it. And so that's what I'm going to show you. And then you're going to gain the skill set to go into Embergen or Houdini or Fumifex or whatever else and you're going to be able to change things and then intuitively just already know what's going to happen before you, you even do anything. So let's, let's hop into Embergen and uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get this thing, get this thing rolling. So, all right, Embergen. Cool. So here I am at the bottom of the screen. And so in this case, hopefully, uh, you'll be able to see just how fast the <laughs> stream capturing is now um, because uh, we, we've got my capture card. So shouldn't be any lag and things like that anymore. So in this case, we, we've got a simple thing. And so uh, we'll probably give these presets out uh, soon. Um, but basically, if you want to recreate this, go to home and then you can go to default smoke, which is what I used. And... Um, you can just zero out every parameter. So just type zero for basically everything uh, in your simulation. Not not in this stuff, but uh, like in your forces, just zero everything out in the force tab, zero everything out in your emitter, and, and just kind of call it a day. And then maybe you want to go to combustion and zero out uh, your, your smoke dissipation. And then you'll have basically the same project file as me. And so in this case, we, we've got a shape, right? We know that the shape is where that smoke is going to come from. And then we've got, um, hang on, just uh, got to redo my chat here. Okay, so we've got this shape. Then we've got our emitter volume. And uh, inside the emitter, we, we have a number of different things. But the main thing that we're going to focus on here is emission. We know that emission from the presentation is just the injection of our components. And then the simulation is going to use these components to advect and project. Right, so this is going to be the the initial setup of our simulation. So, pretty cool. So if we turn our smoke rate to zero, 
nothing at all is happening. We wouldn't expect anything to happen. If we go to our simulation, we can go to a visualizer here and we can view a 2D grid. Nothing is happening. The, the simulation has no data at all. You know, they, they have nothing at all uh, uh, to work from. And so but we can go to our emitter and let's just say 150 for our smoke rate. Cool. We, now we have a little ball of density, but, but it's not doing anything because we don't have any other uh, information that we're giving the advection and projection steps. They're running right now, but they don't have any other information. They don't, they're like, hey, I don't have any forces to, uh, to, to react to, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to just sit here and chill. And so these voxels are just chilling. Now, whenever we move this, the advection and projection is going, oh crap, I have something to do. I have to fill in this space. The space is empty, so it's not moving anything. But there we go. We're, we're filling this in. We're, we're painting. You know, we can, we can you know, make some art or whatever. Here's some kind of little cloud. We're, we're 3D painting a cloud. We can go over in 3D, kind of paint this. So cool. So we just learned that without any other motion or whatever, we can come in here and, and inject density. So really, really cool. Um, so we've got that. And then uh, next up, we have... Um, and by the way, the stream is buffering for me uh, on my end. Is everything good on, on y'all's end? Just making sure. Let me know in the in the chat. So, um, yeah. And somebody in uh, our moderator thing in Discord, let me know if the stream is uh, smooth too. Cool. All right. I'll ignore the, the buffering on, on my stuff. Cool. So, um, all right. Thank you everybody. So we've got our density. Well, what can we do? So let's kind of play with a force for a second. And so there's two types of forces. You have a global force, which applies to the whole simulation if you pull off of this tab. And then we have uh, forces that are masked by the emitter. So if we come here and we drag off a force noise, wow, look at that. Advection and projection are finally uh, doing something, right? They're like, hey, we, we have uh, some force noise here, uh, and so we can enable the gizmo. And so we've got this force noise, and um, uh, we can kind of see if we go to, say, a 2D grid. Uh, then it's, it's doing a bunch of stuff, and it's just chilling, you know? And it's actually masked by the emitter here. Um, but that, that force noise is pushing the smoke around. So we can grab this. And what do we kind of expect to happen? Well, we expect a trail of smoke. So say you have a missile, boom. There's your missile trail, right? You have a meteor. It's probably going to be on fire. There's your meteor. That's what? Two parameters, three parameters. It's extremely intuitive. It's just, you just expect it. You know that there's forces coming from this sphere now, right? The force isn't here. It's only on the sphere because we told it to only be connected to the emitter. If we connected it to the simulation, uh, like this, it's a different story. It's going to happen to everything and everything's just going to be complete chaos. There's ways to mitigate that. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But ultimately, this is just, it's two parameters. The, the black box of the simulation for advection and projection are doing everything else for you. So let's kind of let's pick up some speed and uh, up the ante. So we'll turn off our force. And let's say that, you know, I want some some heavy some heavy smoke. What well, we learned from our presentation earlier that we need something called smoke weight. And so you can do something called control P and we can type weight. So if you don't know where the parameter is, it'll tell you simulation force smoke weight. So that's control P and that'll search every node and uh, and let you know. Uh, Sander Witt in the chat says why doesn't the domain fill with smoke without the force? Because uh, as far as I know, there's no diffusion. There's no force trying to get it to move uh, into the other voxels. It doesn't have to. We're just saying, hey, um, we're just going to sit here and chill in this spot. We, we haven't given it any other uh, information to fill that. And things like projection, I believe, it keeps those things in check. Um, if you have smoke 
uh, in the air, or say you light a candle, the entire atmosphere uh, doesn't burst into flames. Uh, it's just uh, the fuel that's being consumed, and that fuel does uh, diffuse in the air and things like that, but it's very limited. At some point, uh, the pressure of everything else around it uh, keeps it in check. So, yeah, and as Will mentioned, it's more or less kind of a vacuum without any forces, and so it's just going to sit there and chill. So hopefully that, that's uh, intuitive enough and explains it. And so we, we were going to go through smoke weight. Let's just do 100, and boom, suddenly our smoke is falling down. Quite intuitive. And, you know, it's coming from the sphere. Um, and you say, well, hey, how do I break up the shape? Well, why don't we add our force noise back to it? Nice. Now we have uh, something kind of like dry ice. Now, the smoke isn't actually colliding uh, with this. And let's go ahead and change our simulation bounds to be equal. So we'll say 256 voxels in this. And we're going to apply our new resolution so that we have more bounds to work with. And so uh, we've got this, but it's not colliding. It's just kind of got some kind of pressure barrier or something. So we can go to the forces tab and we'll do solid ground. And look at that. Now the smoke is behaving exactly like you would intuitively believe it. If you have dry ice, right, which is a, like an ice cube of like uh, carbon dioxide, I believe. Um, you know, and so let's just say, let's say that this is dry ice. Well, dry ice is typically a cube, right? Probably. It could be a rectangle. So let's make a rectangle, say three by three uh, by six or something like that. We can rotate the emitter and whatnot. Pretty cool. And so we've got this cube of, of dry ice uh, doing its thing. So pretty neat. And then, of course, if we move it, we expect, you know, a certain number of things uh, to happen. But one thing that's not happening is we're kind of like, hey, but a, a, a cube of dry ice is solid. It is. And solid objects like the spoon that we saw in the liquid, right? So we saw a spoon going through a liquid in my presentation. It was a solid object. It, it It's pushing things out of the way. And so we could do one thing. We could make it this a collider, but that's a bit too, too much right this second. So we'd go to forces in the emission tab and we could just say 100. We want to transfer... 100% of the velocity to the smoke. And so now whenever we move this, it's probably a bit too much. So let's kind of take into account, you know, friction of the air or something. So let's do 50%. We'll restart the sim. Look at that. It's intuitive. The, the smoke is inheriting the velocity of the cube. And additionally, now we're like, well... You know, just like it was mentioned earlier, why doesn't the smoke fill the whole volume? Well, now it is, right? Because it's not dissipating. We don't have any dissipation because I turned that off to zero everything out. Let's just say 25%. So I, I want the smoke to eventually decay over time. So now our smoke is decaying. What is it? It's just, just intuitive. And so somebody said, how's the post-processing? There is none. And then on our rendering, there's just a smoke sharpening. But we could even turn post-processing off, if that's what you mean. So there, there's just sharpening here uh, in the shading node. Um, and so, yeah, pretty pretty simple. So let, let's kind of uh, up the ante a bit, even more, and, and show a, a bit more. But before we do that, let's kind of do a recap. So we've got buoyancy, right? And so buoyancy is, as we know, from our presentation. We've got a uh, smoke rate that we're emitting density, sure. We've got temperature, which is, uh, you know, in Kelvin. And so we're adding temperature from the sphere. We can go to our simulation and see this by going to our visuals tab, enable gizmo. And we can see these little blobs of temperature just kind of going up. Um, and the projection and project, uh, uh, pressure steps in the simulation are kind of giving us this blobby uh, curlness. So kind of interesting. It's just how, how the physics are working with something um, uh, this uniform. So kind of neat. We can break up the uniformity by adding a force, as we know. We can turn that off for a second. And, and we'll notice that uh, I kind of skipped over, but 
the big part of buoyancy. And so we're, we're emitting temperature. We go to the simulation node. We go to, to our forces. We zero out buoyancy. And you go, but, but Nick, I'm, I'm emitting temperature. Temperature is supposed to rise. Well, yeah, only, only in the context of, of Earth. Only in the context of the density of Earth's air. As far as I know, if you have temperature in space, it doesn't really care. It's going to dissipate really quick because space is extremely cold. But it doesn't really matter. that There's nothing uh, saying that uh, hot air due to thermodynamics needs to be more buoyant. Because our multiplier, remember this is just a multiplier against our temperature. We can actually hover over the tooltip. It says, add a force going up according to the temperature of your cell, which is your voxel, uh, expressed in the percentage of gravity per 1,000 Kelvin. We have 6,000 Kelvin. If we do 100%, we're, we're going to have uh, uh, basically 600%. Or actually, I did 1,000. So let's do 100. Um, so this is more like, uh, I, I, which I don't know how to get it. Maybe it's 6 meters per second or something like that. Uh, if we kind of calculate the math, because this is actually a very large volume uh, in general. And so it doesn't look like it, but this is <laughs> quite a few meters tall and stuff like that. So we've, we've got this temperature. It's rising now because we've completed the, the equation. So buoyancy is working and we can do, you know, more buoyancy. And we can go to our visuals, turn this off so that we can see it. And this is where uh, the intuition comes in. Well, if I, if I change my multiplier, it's going to rise quicker. If I lower my multiplier, it's going to rise slower, right? It's just intuitive. But then you say, well, well, Nick, th there's another part of the equation. It it's temperature. You're right. Well, let's keep buoyancy at 100%. Let me lower my temperature. It's going to slow down. It's the same thing. Uh, oh, sorry. I did smoke rate. Right. Let me raise my temperature. Well, it's going to rise faster. The, the temperature's more. It's just multiplying against each other. It's a multiplier. So more temperature is going to rise faster, right? Uh, more buoyancy is going to rise faster as long as you have temperature. So it's pretty cool. It's intuitive. So other than that, let's go to uh, colliders just real quick. And so you can drag off, make a collider, drag off again, make another collider. And here we go. We got a little tiny sphere. Let's increase it. Boom. We're, we're, we're pushing this around. It's behaving as we expect. And we've got an oscillator here changing this smoke. It's pretty cool. And we've also got a point light here. And, and this looks uh, pretty, pretty awesome. So it's kind of behaving just like we would expect. Right? The sphere is pushing things around. Smoke's not being eaten by it. It's kind of, kind of cool. And, and as we know... From this, what do we expect? What would you expect that you would find in this emitter? Right? You, I think you would expect some smoke emission, some temperature. And uh, in the sim, we'd really just expect buoyancy. We haven't even gone into uh, vorticity yet. So we're getting there. And I, I'm going to try and pick up the pace because I know I'm going slow. But I'm going slow to, to try and get this, to, to get this into your... Into your head to to have you think about why this works. It's it's just a couple of parameters, and that's that's really really awesome. So very cool. So now we're we're gonna go into uh, forces real quick. So we've got this line force. You can see our little gizmo. We're we're pushing up a bit, and uh, we're we're rotating. So we've got this twist strength. This is plugged into the simulation. Um, if we have no twist strength at all. It just pushes it up. Now, in this case, I do have temperature. And under force, I do have buoyancy as well. Um, so that's added is additive. It's adding to the effect. And so really, really quite cool. And so, but in general, if we come here and make this twist again, it's just intuitive. It just kind of works, right? So it's really awesome. So if you want to twist your smoke, this is how you do it. You do it with a line force. And so we've also got a force noise uh, on these. And I've got a force line here on the base, too, uh, that's kind of assisting uh, in that extra uh, rotation. So pretty cool. And we've got the, this cool hurricane-like pattern and stuff like that at the top. And sometimes with, like, the pressure system and stuff, 
this is a bit wonky. That's some, some stuff that we need to tune. But in general, if your simulation is, um, you know, uh, very tame, so to speak, and there's not many parameters uh, at, at work, then, then in general, you're going to get some pretty smooth uh, rotation and things like that if you use twisting strength on your forces. So FXM says, so are emitter forces and sim forces simply additive? Yeah, they're just additive. They just add or inject those components into the simulation. And the simulation is going to take uh, this additional data and uh, do its best to uh, work with it. And so, for instance, we can go here to our uh, Visuals tab. We will choose Z, and we'll lower our density of arrows. So we can see here, let's change our arrow scaling. We can kind of see that this simulation is taking that force. It's rotating around, and uh, it's running the advection and projection, which we know tends to try and curl as um, you know things are changing. Uh, as things are, are moving and displacing the other fluid, it tends to curl because that's got to be replaced by something else. But because it's moving so fast, it doesn't have much time to curl. And so, but you can see the simulation at work. It's quite intuitive. We, we turn off our line force, what do we expect? It's going to slow down. That, that force is no longer being applied, right? And so these arrows are going to start to settle down and things are just going to start moving pretty slow because we're not telling it to do anything else. Even this emission will eventually slow down and, and stop. So, pretty pretty neat. It's quite cool. So, other than that, let, let's move on to the next thing. Vortices. So, now, now we're going to talk about vorticity. Up until now, we haven't had any uh, direct vorticity in our simulation. So, we can go to the vorticity tab. And let me actually just change this all to zero. Let's zero it all out. This is almost what we saw with the spoon in the water, right? Earlier in the presentation. You've got these cool little eddies and, and vortices. They're not perfect in this case, unfortunately. They're, they're not perfect. It's just due to how my simulation's set up and, and whatnot. But you, you can kind of see what's happening. We can amplify these uh, with this large vorticity parameter. Now it's a bit more like we like we expect. I don't have a true 2D simulation, but this is kind of mimicking it. Look at that. You can see the vortices. Pretty cool. Well, what does vorticity intensity do? So let, let's lower our large back to zero. Let's just do, say, 5%. Those vortices are now being multiplied against, and they're amplified. Okay, let's do 15%. It's going to be a lot stronger. It's a lot crazier. A lot more turbulent, right? A lot more turbulence. It's chaos. Let's do 30%. I would expect a lot more chaos, right? Look at that. So much more chaos. You say, well, okay, cool, but but how, how do I use this? Well, let's go back to our, our density ball. Let's add in a force. Let's add in some temperature. And let's change our buoyancy so that it's going up a little bit, right? Let's bring this emitter down so that we have more space. We're utilizing our space properly. The smoke is really smooth. We, we see all these uh, vortices. In this case, they're in 3D, right? So pretty cool. But let's change our vorticity we would expect a lot more detail. Now in this case, we don't have any dissipation. So as this temperature dissipates and whatever, uh, it's, it's doing some pretty pretty weird stuff, right? This vorticity is way too strong. And then let's go to my simulation. Let's change my projection quality to ultra, right? Which is gonna give us a lot higher quality simulations. Um, but because our smoke isn't decaying, we get all these really weird, um, Things. So let's go to combustion and let's just say, you know, 25% uh, dissipation, right? Let's make this look a bit more realistic. Smoke tends to dissipate. And so it's pretty, pretty awesome. So let's kind of move this around. And now we kind of have a, a more detailed uh, thing. And we also have some issues 
where you know maybe our ray mark sharpening is a, a bit too sharp or something like that. And so it's going to amplify um, what we would call what I call details, right? It's going to sharpen the image. So it's going to sharpen some of these uh, imperfections. But if we have a larger emitter, this is also a pretty small emitter. If we have a larger emitter, a lot of those issues are going to kind of uh, go away, right? We can do uh, some additional things like, um, you know, change our voxel size to be larger, change our bounds to be larger, and then subsequently make the simulation a bit larger. And that's going to get rid of some of those uh, artifacts and things like that. But in general, this is uh, is pretty pretty cool. So we've got our buoyancy. We can change that. We can make it faster too. That can also kind of get rid of it. We can add a ceiling. And like I said, it's only available in 1.1, but pretty cool, right? It's behaving kind of like we would expect. It's becoming, um, you know, more detailed, so to speak. We can also uh, break up some of these shapes. So, so let's stop trying to cover up some of the, the imperfections of the solver. And let's go back to, to something like this where we've got this. Well, typically, air isn't completely static. If, if we go to our visualizer, we can kind of debug this a little bit. The, the air over here is pretty static. There's not a whole lot going around. There's some minor displacement and um, advection and, and projection going on here. It's happening. We can see the little arrows trying to do their thing. But not a whole lot's going on. It's pretty static. So, so we can influence that with... A force and we can actually mask it to be say just where the smoke is so we can just say okay well where there's smoke I want to break it up a little bit I want to keep adding force where there's smoke and now we've broken up a lot of those artifacts we can go to general we can maybe change our scale to be a bit larger change our amplitude and now our smoke is going to be a bit more chaotic it's going to be more turbulent we can go to the force on our emitter Maybe up the amplitude on that too. And now we have some pretty good looking smoke. It's not particularly static. If we wanted it to blow in a particular direction, say a smoke plume, we can add a line force. Let's drag this line force up. Let's press W, hold shift and rotate it. And then let's change our push strength to like I don't know, 0.01. Now our smoke is blowing in the wind. We're starting starting to look like that uh, that little example that I showed with the, the manhole steam, right? If we go back to my presentation just real quick so that we can kind of break this down, right? We go back to this. We're kind of doing the same thing. We've got an emitter. We've got our noise. We've got our line force. We've got temperature and buoyancy. We've got vorticity. We added dissipation. We can collide with the ground. That's kind of the, the, the last step here. So let's uh, let's collide with the ground real quick. And so we've got this. Let's turn on our, uh, our ground collisions. And let's bring our shape all the way to the ground. Let's make it a cylinder. And actually, I did the wrong wrong way. Let's change the radius. Maybe we need to change... Uh, our line line force a bit. I don't know about you. It might be a bit too strong, but it's probably strong in the picture, I'm sure, because steam is typically pretty fast. What about you? But that's that's starting to look a, a hell of a lot like the uh, like the picture, right? From this angle, there's a different emitter, different shape. There's only coming from the edges. That's that's pretty cool. We can maybe lower our vorticity a little bit. It's a bit too much. It's pretty awesome. We've got some, some cool billows going on there. And, and look at how simple this is. We've got our force noise on the simulation to break things up. We can turn that off if we want. We don't need it. Right? We don't need it. So, But it just it breaks up our shapes. We don't necessarily need this right this second because we've got the line force pushing everything. But, but you can add it. So pretty cool. We've, we've kind of recreated that steam. And what, what are the parameters we changed? We added force noise. We have a cylinder that we changed. We have smoke rate and temperature. In the simulation, we've added a little bit of vorticity and buoyancy.
We also have a fourth line. That's it. This is this is sim tuition. This is going through and breaking things down and and following along. So let, let's let's move on and do something a little bit cooler. And, and let's let's add fuel to the mixture. Let's start blowing shit up, right? Let's blow some things up. So overall, just real quick in the chat, we got 130 people. What do you think? It, I, I know I'm being re repetitive in this, but it, it really is this simple. This is the, the intuition that you have to gain. And if we say, well, if, if I have a, a piece of smoke here, right, and I add a force this way, so say temperature, I know it's going to rise. And look, it's even curling, right? So this is this is kind of a, a, a bunch of smoke. It's curling, right? We've got all this stuff. It's kind of doing what it's doing. I know that if I push it this way, it's going to go that way. So there's a line force. We've got buoyancy and temperature. We've got smoke wave, right? And then the simulation does everything else for us. We, we don't have to worry about drawing all the vortices and like, you know, how am I going to make my smoke curl and like do all this stuff? Don't worry about it. The simulator is going to handle all that for you. It, it, it does everything for you. You just need to set up the initial conditions and the ongoing condition conditions. Now, initial conditions could be something like this. So let, let's hop back in. And let's go back to our basic density, right? So we've got our basic density. Well, let's talk about an initial condition. Well, what about an explosion? Well, well, well Nick, explosions, it's, it's not just a, a forced noise, right? I mean, we can go here. We can type, say, 100 if we want. And that's it's pretty crazy. But, like, does it? Doesn't uh, explosions tr try and compress things, right? D don't they try and compre uh, compress the air around it? Aren't they just, well, for, for lack of a better word, explosive? Yeah, th they are. And so that's why we have another uh, uh, force type. And so let let's disable this. It's called pressure. Let's just type in 100. I'd say this is a bit more explosive. And let let's lower our random intensity to zero. And let's see what, what this does. Let's go to our simulation. Let's do like 0.3 voxel size. I want a pretty large box. And then let's bring this up to the center. And so this is without any temperature. It's without any um, uh, without any buoyancy, no smoke weight or anything. And then let's make sure that our, our box is equal, just so that our pressure solver uh, has equal footing. And let's just kind of step through this with Z. So we'll slow it down. I'm holding Z down on my keyboard. It's equal pressure. What happens if, if we make the pressure like a thousand percent? It's quite a bit more explosive. Let's make our emitter a little bit bigger. Wow. I would say that's that's explosive. Right? That's that's a lot more explosive. Where if we go here, zero. Let's turn our force back on. It's a hell of a lot more explosive than that. So that's what pressure does. Pressure is literally building pressure. And let, let me show you something really cool real quick. Uh, I'm going to show you something amazing that's coming in 1.1. And so this is using our new pressure solver. I'm going to add a collider real quick. And I'm going to add a tube. I don't know if, if you know, but tube is kind of like a B-O-M-B. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, but it's a bomb. All right, so imagine if we have a bomb, and uh, we're, we're going to take this uh, emitter. Let's press H. So that, And by the way, if your shapes are ever hidden, you can go to View, Shapes, or press H. That's going to show you your shapes. So let's take this. We're going to go here. And this is a, a hollow tube. So I'm going to make this emitter a little bit smaller. I'm going to put it in the tube. Right? And then... Uh, Let's make sure that we have enough thickness. And let's change our height and our radius. Okay, let's lower our thickness a bit. Let's lower our height a little bit. Let's lower our radius a little bit until it, it fits. And we'll even lower our pressure because it's, it's ridiculous. Pressure software can't account for all of it. Um, let's just make sure that we are fully in. And come on. Why are you not working? This is the one time that it uh, doesn't 
properly contain this. It contained it in all my other examples. Okay, there we go. I don't know why it's seeping through. But my point is typically, and I probably have something. Actually, I know what it is. My projection quality is not high enough. Okay, that was my bug. Cool. So basically, we've got this. So we've got our emitter. We've got this vessel that is containing all of our smoke. If we press H, we can see that none of it is seeping through now. Right? So this is filling this vessel up with a bunch of pressure. And then whenever we turn this off, it's going to explode because this pressure is going to try and seek to equalize just like a real life grenade or something. Boom. Let's, let's add more. Let's go higher stakes. More explosive. I, I want even more explosive. Boom. Really cool. Let's, let's break the end cap off. Wrong one. Just kind of pops. It explodes outwards. This pressure is creating a lot of force. Right? So this is the new pressure solver in Embergen. This is going to be intuitive too. Let, let's cap the end. Let's take a sphere. Let's make it quite large. And so let's have this smoke coming out. And we're going to plug the hole with this. Well, what would you expect to happen if we make a gap here? Just like on our manhole. Right? We, we can actually simulate the manhole just like this. Let's make this a cylinder. Let's change the radius to be kind of like the uh, the manhole cap. Let's kind of plug this over. And then let's create a leak. There we go. There's our leak. And so this is something you can't do it right this second in live Embergen. This is coming out in 1.1. So pretty cool. All right. So let's kind of uh, refocus. And, and move on because we're, we're almost over time. So let, let's add in fuel to the mixture. This is where things get a bit complicated, but it can still be simple. So we're going to add fuel. Let's just say 200%. We're going to add temperature. And uh, we'll just say 6,000. And we're, we're going to turn off our smoke. Now this is expanding, right? Right, the smoke, and this has an expansion uh, or a reason to expand. Because this combustion cycle is going to create a new force. And the force is actually defined here in combustion. We have something called expansion. So we can turn that off. It's basically just like pressure in the emitter works. So, but we're, we're going to keep this like this. We're going to keep our expansion on. And we've got a growing nuke just like in, uh, in, in Oppenheimer. It's pretty cool. So we, we've got a giant growing thing in a vacuum. But still, still no turbulence. The pressure is uh, completely equal. And there's actually probably still uh, stuff combusting uh, underneath this. So pretty interesting. We could add in a noise force, right, to kind of get this to be kind of cool. But you say, well, well, Nick, once again, I've got temperature. Why isn't it rising? Well, it's not rising because well, we know that it's an equation. We need buoyancy. Boom, look at that. Now, we, we kinda have a little explosion. Well, let's add some pressure. 150. Look at that. That looks kinda like an explosion. Maybe there's too much temperature. Maybe we want a bit less. Quite cool, right? Now, how do we make this? So, I talked about in the presentation, we, we have initial and continuous, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, components. This is kind of continuous. But we only want to make it initial. So we can go here. There's another tip. You can click these little things. You can hover over it. And one click is timeline override. Let's hold shift and add a key. We'll add another. First one, the emitter is going to be active. Second, we're going to turn it off. Boom. Now we have a burst. Might not be long enough. Let's add a little more burst. Let's go to my pressure, reduce the amount of noise. Now we have a, a big puff of explosion. You go, okay, well, th this is cool and all. You know, maybe there's a bit too much pressure. Right? This is cool, but there's no detail here. Well, remember, we can take our current vortices that we have in the black box of Embergen happening through advection and projection, and we can amplify those. So let's do, say, 15%. 
Well, hot damn, that's starting to look like an explosion to me, right? We can do a little bit thing, a little bit more. Let's get just slightly more advanced. Let's go to smoke color. And, and if, say, if you didn't know where it was, and you're just like, man, there's got to be a way to color my smoke. A smoke color. Or let's just say color. Scene, blah, 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 blah. What is this? You know, maybe, maybe my smoke color, right? Cool. There it is. It's in shading it, and we've highlighted it for you. So let's make this a little bit darker. Right, maybe something uh, something like this. Let's make it a bit darker. Boom. So now we've got a cool little explosion. This is this is pretty neat. Right? Okay, well, well let's kind of up the ante a little bit. What if what if I wanted so we're gonna get more advanced. What if I wanted, you know, say my emitter, um, I'm actually moving the wrong thing. What if I wanted to move my emitter around and have random explosions? in the air, right? How would I do that? Well, I could take the time and animate emitter activity. Sure, but this this is just kind of going off of intuition, right? So so let, let's say that I, I wanted this. Well, let, let's think about it. What could we do? Well, let's, let's play with this. So let's turn, make sure our emitter activity is on. Well, what if I could animate the radius of my sphere? That kind of gives me some bursts. We actually see the pressure going crazy here whenever we have more explosions. That looks awesome. So what if we could take that and animate it? Well, we have some really cool stuff where we can click again and expose this to the node graph. And so instead of keyframing a bunch of stuff, let's add an oscillator. And that's doing the work for us. We can see that this is going up to about 7 meters in radius. We don't need that much. So let's do, say, 5. 5%. 5 Boom! We got a pretty crazy uh, thing going on here. This is pretty cool, and we can see the the pressure shock wave going through the smoke. This is just awesome. This is the the power of the upcoming Ember Gen. Really, really cool. So we've got that. It's probably a bit too big, so we'll lower our base. We'll make our base like zero. We'll just get these cool little puffs. Well, well now I want it to move around. All right, so I want it to move around. Well. Let's go ahead and expose this again. And I'm going to think we need another oscillator. And so, but there's one thing that I remember that's broken. Um, I need to reset the bounds of this. And so let, let's make, let's zero out our base. All right, so let's zero out our base. Let me press H so I can see our shape. And we can see that it's actually uh, going crazy here. Um, so pretty, pretty weird. And then... Uh, for some reason, my, uh, let me just make sure that my emitter still works. It does. Cool. So I think that our, our stuff is, is going way too fast. First off, going way too fast. And so we've got this. It's going way too fast. So let's go to our oscillator and let's tone it way down. Let's do like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then let's just add noise. So we're going to choose this from sine wave to noise. Right? This is going to give me random motion. And then let's change my frequency a bit on each. Right? Something like this. Let's change our phases so that it's completely random motion. And, and let's kind of go through and let's change my pressure to zero again, just real quick. And let's add smoke. And so, and let's remove my force noise. You can see that more or less, and we can change our base to be up more, and let's see our bounds again. We're basically, imagine this is paint strokes. We're, we're painting strokes of smoke. And, and we, we think about it, like this is a lot more complicated because it is an oscillator, but just just think about it. We're, we're, we're running these, uh, these random noise patterns in X, Y, and Z. And if you forget about these two things for a second, Let's just look in, in the node, right? Let's just look in the node for a second. Our position is just randomly changing. It's just like as if we, we had the mouse and we grab it and we move it ourselves. These, these parameters are going to change too. So why not just have an oscillator do it for us, right? Cool. And then we can animate the radius too over time with just the sine wave. And that's going to give us these cool strokes. Right? It's kind of like VR painting in the game, just like uh, RNFX said in the chat. 
really cool. All right, well, let's let's add our stuff back onto it. Let's go down the steps. Let's say we want 100 pressure. Awesome. Look, we, let's do 200. It's really cool. Now, now we've got these random explosions. Let's go back in and uh, let's increase our temperature until this starts to combust. And let's remove our smoke again. Holy shit, look at that. We we have some really cool explosions. And let's give me more space by increasing our voxel size. And now I'm thinking I want to collide this on the ceiling. And we know that that's in the force tab. So let's just go ahead and collide it. And just for the pressure solver's sake, it tends to come up with cooler explosions. Let's, let's make sure that our ground is solid too. And then we know that in combustion, and we can press control P, we can type dissipate. Smoke dissipation, where's that at? It's right here. Let's do 25%. And I, you know what I'm thinking? I want some bigger explosions. And if I want to, just in case, I can say, you know, um, uh, let's see, shape or radius. And I can type this and double click and say position. As your sims get more complicated, you can name things. You can also, we have a new thing uh, where you can press control H and say, uh, does uh, random movement. It's more of a note for you. Or you can press C and do a comment. But this is a, a good way to have full paragraphs. So kind of cool. So let's go ahead and, and increase my radius. I know that I can just increase my base size and that's gonna offset my output here. Look at that. That's really cool. Maybe we want them to, to streak across more. So with our position, we can just increase the frequency, maybe let's say on Y, so that it kind of moves around. Maybe for our radius, we increase the frequency too. It's really awesome. And and this is a, how long would this take you to do in Houdini? How, how long would it take you to figure this out? Versus here, let me, let me come to my face again, because I, I, I want to just, just do this. This, this whole process, we just explored, we went from an idea where, you know, I want random explosions. How, how can we intuitively get that? How can I get a sphere here and here? And here and here. Well, if I could animate the radius, make it go from say zero to one, so from no radius to some, and then I can randomly move the position, that's going to give me a lot of little bursts. We actually have a node called Shape Burst that does it for you, but that's edge case stuff, right? We can do it manually too. There's a million ways to do things in Ember You can do this stuff with, with a lot of different things. It's really cool. And so we, we went from an idea, and now we have an, a simulation that looks really, really good. And so, you know, I, I went, you know, previously and did some other stuff. And so here's kind of a, a, a variation on it real quick. So here's a lot slower. Just, just sort of looks the way you would expect. The fire's lighting the smoke. This is just randomly combusting. We have a, a lot lower buoyancy, I'm going to guess. Right? From, or, or in this case, maybe we have lower temperature. Yeah, it looks like it. And so we could increase the buoyancy to make it go faster if we want. And what's cool is uh, we could even have smoke weight. So we, we could uh, say, let's do 500. And so we could have these combust, and now they're going to fall. But if we have buoyancy, let's say 502, the smoke... Once it cools off, it's eventually going to have enough force to pull back down, right? And if we want that to happen faster, let's lower our buoyancy. And as the smoke cools, it's going to fall down. That's pretty cool, right? We know how to get this effect because we know like the five key components that uh, that advection and projection are looking for, right? They're they're looking for what are my forces. You know, I know, right? I wish I had a markup tool. I do. Here, let's do this. What's happening? All right, let, let me have a free draw. Boom. We've got pressure. We've also got temperature, right? This is causing stuff to rise. As this cools, we've got a force pulling this smoke down. 
because smoke weight is taking over. Buoyancy isn't strong enough to handle it anymore. So the smoke is falling. We've also got a collider on the top. Then we've got some crazy stuff happening in the black box, which is combustion. Then we also have vorticity. Right, this is causing a lot of detail. Overall, it's pretty simple. We, we can look at this static picture and infer what's happening. Right, we can just infer what's happening. And, and, and the image is static. Right? It's pretty, pretty awesome. This is, this is what my theory of sim tuition is. And so, if we think about this, it's pretty, pretty neat, right? And so let's say, okay, well, and so this is completely off the cuff. I haven't done it yet. Well, you say, well, well, Nick, you know, I, I really, I want to make a fire tornado. Okay. Well, this is going to be slightly more advanced. Well, let's start from our completely zeroed out thing. And I think, you know, uh, thinking about it just real quick, you know, we, we've got this stuff. Look at my, my pretty face. Um, I, I did this from, from default smoke. And kind of the problem with these things, uh, potentially, is, is you don't learn from the kind of, kind of like from the base. Like you're, you're not building all this stuff. So... You know, it's like you've got an emitter and then like you have to go and you say, okay, well, they got smoke rate and temperature and then they've got no pressure and they've got like velocity transfer, but like the emitter's not moving. And then in here, they've got like some kind of, you know, buoyancy number and vorticity and like then like under combustion, they've got a certain like 16.333%. Like why is it 16.333? Well, it's that because that's just what I, I figured was the best <laughs> for, for this, this thing or this default or whatever. Um, but, but it's just like all the stuff is already set up for you. But if, if we have this completely zeroed out thing, right, you, you can start from scratch. So let's build a fire tornado from the layers. Well, I, I'm going to think that I probably want to have this from a torus so that we have a hollow center. All right, so let's, let's move this down. Let me go to my simulation size. We'll do 256 um, by 256. We'll do, say, maybe 0.2 voxel size. To have it be quite a bit bigger. And I'll do say 384 to give me um, something a bit taller. And actually just, just for the sake of the pressure solver. Let's keep everything equal. So let's go ahead and add in a line force. Right. And so the cool thing is remember. Buoyancy. It, which is an upward force. It relies on temperature and the buoyancy multiplier. But hell. We can see here, you don't even need buoyancy in some cases. You can just, you can force the smoke to go up. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. The cool thing is, is, is this is plugged into the sim. Well, what happens, right, if I plug it just into the emitter? It's kind of acting a lot more like temperature, isn't it? Right, we're, we're, we're preloading these, these density voxels with information that they need to go up. This is just like the spoon in the water, right? You, you look at this stuff and you do these things just one by one. You gain the intuition. And you go, man, that just makes sense, right? It's the sim tuition. I'm telling you, this is my theory about how this stuff should be taught. It's not change this, change this, change this, right? That's all, it's all bullshit. It's, well, what is the basic thing that the simulation is trying to do? What is reality trying to do? How can I mimic that? So let's get into the fire tornado. All right, I'm going on my ramble. I'm super passionate about this. I love it. So we've got this. We got our line force. You know, all cool and dandy that it's on the emitter, but I don't want it there. I want it here. I want to kind of push this smoke up a little bit. Let's do 0.5. Then also, we, we know that this is a line force, but we, we have other parameters. We can twist. We can repel. You can even add pressure, which is, which is kind of cool. It's a really weird thing that you're able to do. It's better off if you mask it with like an emitter, but you, you can do it. And so well, let's go ahead and add in some twist. You know, what, what do we, what do we expect to happen? You say, okay, well, well, Nick, I don't, I don't see anything. Well, let's, let's debug, let's diagnose. Let's go to vorticity or, or sorry, um, visual. Let's enable our gizmo. We can see in 3D, it actually is twisting. Let's go to 2D grid. Let's change this to Z and, uh, 
Let, let's increase our arrow size and our arrow scaling. Let's lower our arrow density. And we go, huh, well, it doesn't look like it's rotating. Well, that's because we're, we're not adding in any, any turbulence. Well, let's add some, some vorticity intensity here. Okay, that, that's kind of neat. Well, we know that we can add in a force noise on the emitter to uh, break things up. Maybe we need to do like 100, right? That's kind of cool. We probably have too much upward motion, so let's lower that a little bit. Maybe we will um, make a solid ceiling and a solid ground. Well, holy shit. Tornadoes, whenever they go across the ground, they tend to kick up a lot of stuff, don't they? I would think that there's a pressure difference between like low pressure and high pressure. I'm not a weatherman, so I'm sure if like the weather chums watching, they'll be like, hey, that is incorrect. But I'm going to guess that there's a pressure difference. I'm going to assume if we go to our simulation and we look at our visual here, and let's just say the y-axis, I think I'm right. <laughs> look, look at look at the pressure building up at the bottom. It's throwing that smoke out. There's nowhere for it to go. That that smoke is being more or less compressed. Now our simulation is incompressible, right? Just for for simplification purposes, right? But that's a lot of turbulence at the bottom. That sure does look like a tornado to me. Well, you said, well, Nick, it's going to be a fire tornado. Don't worry. That that's only <laughs> like two extra steps. We need to add fuel, All right? So let's add quite a bit. We need to add temperature. But actually, there's a cool thing that you can do called replace. It guarantees that the temperature at the beginning will, will be what you set it to. So it guarantees that that fuel is going to ignite. Let's go ahead and turn off our smoke. And look at this. We've kind of got fire, but it could be getting suffocated. We could also increase our temperature. And there's another parameter. And you say, well, Nick, there, there's a lot of smoke here. Why, why is there smoke? I, I don't have any smoke that I'm adding. Yeah, but as fuel combusts, there's leftover byproduct, right? That, that byproduct is, is going to be smoke in this case. And so we, we, our generated smoke is actually at 100%. Let's change it to like 15%. Well, cool. Now, now I've got some fire, right? I've got some fire, but I want more upward motion. So, well, now that I have temperature, I can add my buoyancy, right? I can have buoyancy kind of get this thing up. Now, let's turn off my my uh, my visualizer here. I don't want to see it. And so we've got my, my visualizer. And so let, let's increase my buoyancy until this really starts kind of going up. And then you say, well, well Nick, I, I can't see my fire. Let's go to, to shading real quick. Well, let's just turn off our smoke. All right, we'll turn off smoke completely. I don't know if you knew that, but you can turn off smoke completely. Looks like a fire tornado to me. Right? We can go to combustion. We can increase our flame intensity if we want. Right? That's a thing. It, it increases our flame intensity. We can also make sure, we could also think and say, hey, you know what? M my fuel, it probably just isn't reaching that high. Well, we could change this to maybe a cylinder, and we could make it that high, right? We, we could make sure that the emitter is taller, right? The, the taller this is, the more the fuel is going to be able to extend upwards, right? This, I would think that's intuitive, you know? If we go back to our, our little torus here, it, the fuel is only coming from here, but if we can make the fuel come from more parts of the simulation, that's pretty cool. And you say, well, well, but I wanted the torus for the hollow effect. Okay. Well, let's duplicate the torus. Just add another one higher. It's kind of interesting. And then you say, well, well, Nick, I, I, I see my shape. Well, let, let's think about that for a second. We could add more force, which we're already at 100. We could add more force. Um, and this part might not be intuitive. This is more the edge case situation. We have something called an emission gradient that you can use to smooth out the effect and it adds like some random noise and stuff. You can also just add temperature. 
Now it comes at the risk of it not being able to ignite the stuff. So we might need to do something like 20,000 temperature. And that's going to get rid of the shape. But we can do replace. We can, re we can reset that. And then change the, the emission gradient. Right? Kind of interesting. And then let's go back and let's throw in our smoke again. Our, um, our smoke. So let's go to smoke. Render smoke. It's pretty neat. We can go to scattering. And maybe our smoke scattering is a bit too high. Wait, that's a lot of light. It's a heck of a lot of light. It's pretty cool. The two two torses is probably a bad idea, but we're learning this through Simtuition. Now that looks like a proper fire tornado to me. And there's more complicated things that you can do that you will learn through maybe like my rendering course where we can do say flames translucency, get some uh, flame looking stuff. And so it's pretty cool. Some interesting uh, dynamics happening here with the pressure solver and whatnot. Um, but we, we think about this, and so let's go back just, just for a second. You know, we didn't add many parameters uh, for this to work. It looks like a pretty complicated simulation, but it's a force noise. Um, we've got some uh, fuel now. That's new to us. Or we got fuel, we got temperature, some buoyancy, um, some vorticity. Um, we did a couple new things with the shading node. Uh, but more or less, and then we have a line force that's doing the, the brunt of the work for us, which is really quite awesome. So that's that's new, right? That, that's cool. That's simple. Um, really, really quite cool. So we'll, we'll hop back in Amberton. Let me see if there's anything else that I want to show. So I showed kind of dry ice. I showed uh, kind of some steam. Um, why don't we make... A, a and I showed an explosion. But why don't I make like a, a pretty pretty nice explosion? All right. So let, let's start back um, from our our thing. So we'll do two more things. We'll do an explosion with my sim tuition method. Very simple. Same shader and everything. And then we'll do um, a fireball that moves around in space and inherits a velocity from the object. And then. If you guys really want, I'll do something with like particles or something. Um, but yeah, so one one key thing uh, real quick. And so we'll go back to, to full cam and let me just uh, bring my, my presentation back up real quick. So I want to go to a certain slide. La, 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 la. All right. So back to it. So in our sourcing breakdown. Right. Th these are the core components for sim tuition. Your emitter, your collider, your force. It's, it's all starting to make sense, right? You've got your simulation, which is just amplifications of whatever you injected into the sim. It's pretty, pretty neat. So here we, we need to think about the initial conditions of an explosion. Right. Initial conditions. Well, it's kind of an immediate emitter. We've got a lot of pressure. That was a new term that we learned. We got a lot of pressure. It's probably going to be some force noise, right? So probably going to be force noise. There's, um, you know, and why don't we actually? Well, let's go to Embergen. We'll do a, a capture. And we'll we'll kind of draw over it again, and we'll kind of try and recreate it just a little bit. So let, let's pop over into Embergen, and then we're we're gonna uh, kind of diagnose a, a preset. And we're going to apply the sim tuition mindset uh, to this, this preset. So let me go to presets in Imogen. There's a bunch. Um, and let's just choose a, a really simple one. This is really simple. Uh, it, it does use particles. So we're, we're not going to do that for this because it only adds to the complexity. I just want you to see that you could do this mostly with simple stuff too. So we're going to pause this. And we can see this. Let's turn off my skybox. Let's show our bounds and uh, let's go ahead and uh, screenshot this as is. And let's draw on it. Okay, so it, it looks like there's a, a sphere. All right, so, so there's a sphere here. And we, we need some kind of force to, to blow our explosion out. Well, okay, uh, we, we have a force noise at our disposal and we have pressure. Let's just use both. 
We also know that we need fuel. We also know that we need temp. We know that there's buoyancy in this case because the, the simulation is going up. And uh, we know that just by default, every simulation is going to need stuff like dissipation and things like that. So that's pretty cool. So we know that we have that. Um, and then the rest is just, you know, kind of some, some interesting shading. We've got some darker smoke. The fire is kind of already there in our shader that we're going to use. Um, and I think that that's pretty much it. So going to be, going to be quite simple. And uh, we're, we're going to try and try and diagnose this. So let's see if we can make something similar. So. We're going to go to file and I'm just going to bring in um, my just density preset that has everything zeroed out. We've got our little thing. Let's go ahead and add in a force noise. So let's go ahead and get that motion going. Let's get those uh, sim, tuition, um, uh, sim tuition vibes flowing. This, this is already acting as I would expect. But I know that we wanted um, some additional pressure. Now let's kind of lower our random intensity here uh, so that we don't get as many uh, randomized pressure spots. And that's what pressure random intensity does. It just kind of creates random pockets of where the pressure is going from. We also see another problem. Our bounds aren't equal. So let's go to do say 256 and let's actually do 384 on the top here uh, to kind of uh, give us more room for our explosion to expand. And then we want a bit of a bigger box without more computation power. So let's do 0.3 for our voxel size. So we also know that the, the sphere was kind of large, right? It's also more of an aerial explosion. So let's kind of do that. We're going to go into our pressure. We're going to lower our, uh, our random intensity to something low. And then we're going to go into our force noise and make it like 100 or something. And then I'm going to do something a bit different to where, um, you know, there's probably also additional detail on the smoke. And so we're going to take another force noise and we're so we, we can kind of do something similar. So if we look here, we've got our vorticity. Let's say something like 25. Right. We're, we're amplifying. We learned in our presentation from the slides that vorticity is a multiplier against your, your current existing vortices. That's what vortices is. It's just a multiplier. It's kind of a trend. Buoyancy is a multiplier on temperature. Uh, smoke weight is a multiplier on your smoke density. Vorticity is a multiplier on how much uh, vorticity there is in the simulation, right? So we're, we're multiplying this, getting more detail. Um, but one cool thing that we could do, so let's make vorticity zero just for this showcase. Let's go to forces. There's uh, something in, in, I believe, Houdini. I believe they call it like a micro solver. And so we've got a constant mask here. Um, but we can make this zero. So we can mask where we want the force to be. So let's only put this on our smoke. So let's go here. We're going to say maybe 100. And we can see that now we've got some crazy little billowing stuff happening. We can lower this a lot. Let's say like 20. So now uh, the smoke is going to be pushed around in random directions based on whatever this is. We could have a larger push, or we could have a lot more noise as we see here. It kind of looks like our vorticity intensity, doesn't it? But this is a bit more controllable, and it's random. Whereas the vorticity intensity is actually taking the true existing vortices. So let's lower this amplitude by quite a bit. And so we've got kind of a micro solver working on the surface of that smoke, giving us more detail, right? And it's very simple. This was just a couple extra parameters, smoke mask, scale, and amplitude. And we can see our amplitude and stuff there. And you can actually go in and, and visualize your, your uh, vortices and stuff like that if you want, or your force noise. So we're, we're getting there with our explosion. So far, it's very simple. We've just got pressure. We've got a force noise and we've got density. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in some fuel. And let's say, let's increase our fuel rate quite a bit. Nothing's combusting because we don't have any temperature. Okay, cool. It's kind of explosive. And for smoke, instead of 0%, we can just say none. We'll just have no smoke. And we'll 
Holy crap, that's that's exploding a bit too much. So we have two things to control this. Our radius is pretty large in this instant, and with the particles that were in the screenshot that we tried to dissect, those are really small. So we can actually probably have a lot smaller radius for our explosion. Then we also know that this is a continuous emitter, and we know from earlier that we can animate our activity by clicking the circle here, holding shift on our timeline, and then checking the last one to turn it off. So now we have a burst. But now we can kind of increase our pressure, make it more explosive. And now it's so explosive that it can't emit. So let's go to our emission and tell this to replace, to guarantee emission. You can probably make this a little bit bigger. That's pretty damn explosive to me. And we can kind of change, um, we can change our seed if we want to change what direction uh, the pressure is going to go in. So this is just a seed for the randomness. We can maybe add more randomness or none at all. Have a more uniform explosion. Maybe change our scale a bit. But it does seem that the randomness of this makes a big difference. So we can change the seed until we kind of get something that we want. It's pretty neat. You can add more noise, so on and so forth. You can just go back in and play with it. So we've got this. Well, well, we don't have any buoyancy right now. So we can go to buoyancy. And let's go ahead and it's like 150. It's looking like an explosion. It's looking pretty cool. Towards the ground, there's a lot more compression. So let's do uh, ground and ceiling. It's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. It doesn't quite look the same because the particles, they kind of win everywhere. So let me show you the difference. Same setup, but this is where the uh, initial components stuff comes in. You can only do so much with a sphere. It goes a long way. You could do a cube or a, a, a cylinder or whatever, but it only goes so much. So we're going to wrap this up. So let's bring in an emitter. We'll do particles. Let's turn off this emitter. We're going to have the same exact shape. And now we've got particles. They're doing their thing. We're going to go to injection. We're going to keep temperature as is. Then we're going to go to injection and we'll say fuel. We'll change our lifetime to maybe something like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. We'll have them die pretty quick. Now, one of the interesting things is, is uh, you can't inject pressure from particles. You can inject velocity, right? You can, uh, you know, have additional velocity on particles. But this, this isn't quite what I would expect from an explosion. So one trick is to still have a volume emitter, right? You can still have a volume emitter. And now look at that. Those particles are being invected, right? They're being invected from our active forces. And so this is something that's a lot more advanced. You can look at the Mastering Particles live stream. And it goes over this. But if we have 100% volume active force, these particles are going to completely follow the fluid sim. If we have less, they're going to have their own gravity and things like that. So we'll keep it like that. And so now we've got this. And under emission, one cool thing here is that you can burst your emission. We don't even need a keyframe. We can just say burst and turn off continuous. We can lower the amount of particles. It's pretty cool. Well, in our emitter, we're still emitting a bunch of stuff. So let's just say no emission for everything. We only want the particles. This is pretty cool. We can have velocity injection. And so that's cool, but the, the particles, they're all still only having uh, the force that's given to them. So we can see here, if we step into the simulation, the force is really just from the pressure. But the cool thing is, is the particles can have their own velocity too. I mean, why, why couldn't they? So we can go to initial forces. Let's just leave velocity from a position. We'll kind of max this out and we'll step and we'll see. Okay, we, we've got some more velocity. Let's change our speed scale. Let's go to active forces. We are making sure that we have some initial forces there. It's pretty cool. We can, and we also see that we're only emitting from the sphere. This is where things like they do become a bit more complicated. Well, we can create like jets by having clumped emissions. And this is stuff that you can learn from it. And, and you can see that 
not much on the simulation side has changed. That the simulation hasn't changed, we're just changing how it's sourced, the initial setup for that simulation. If we, uh, one cool thing that you can do is you can press M and hide your simulation. You can disconnect the particle pin to not see those either. If we go to our uh, velocity visual, we can see the pressure propagating as we step through. And if we go to our 2D grid, we can see this velocity. We can increase our arrow size and scaling. And we can see some of those particles actually flying through and creating their own velocity streaks. It's more of a streaky explosion. So that's pretty neat. We can change this location. It's going to kind of change how that simulation works out. And so we can go back and show our simulation. Boom. Well, we're kind of missing one other piece. This is really bright and our smoke was dark. We'll go to smoke. We'll change our color. Right? We'll change our color. And we can go to scattering because there's a bunch of light scattering here. And uh, let's see. We'll go to flames contribution for the scattering. Still seems to be quite a bit. Right, because we have a lot of fire. So we can go to flames and we could do something like uh, show some flame translucency. It's pretty cool. We can increase the brightness of the flames with this thing called shaping by flames. We, we're kind of learning, we don't have a lot of density in our smoke. Now, now we learned that, that density from an explosion, right, density from an explosion is uh, injected. Or, we also learned that um, you can generate smoke. Now, a generate smoke is already 100%. As much fuel that burns up is generating as much smoke as it can. So we can go ahead and inject some smoke from the particles. Or, we could go to our volume emitter. Say, smoke emission. Let's do add. Let's add quite a bit. It's a lot more explosion. Now, we maybe have too much pressure. We want a smaller explosion to fit our bounds. Let's add it to the ground. It's pretty cool. And we've still got our particles kind of doing their thing. We can increase the speed scale on that. Boom. It's really, really cool. So that's that. Now the last thing. All right. So last thing. Now quick chat. Are you there? I know that this is getting a bit long. We're almost at hour two. So I'm going to end this. This is the last piece. We're going to do a moving fireball. All right, just in the chat, kind of tell me the components uh, to keep y'all awake. Tell me the components that you think you would see. What are, say, your top five components that you would need for a fireball that's moving? Right, what are, what are your top components? Top five. What do you think? We only have just a few components that we can use anyway. But what are some of the components that we would need for a moving fireball? I'll, I'll I'll wait for the chat to catch up for a second. Not seeing anything so far. There's no chat interaction. That's okay. All right. So R and FX says a noise sphere animated position with the graph. FXM says buoyancy. Didn't know there was going to be a test. There is a test, right? Because. And I want y'all after this to go and play through this. Watch the replay and look at the components and then go change those sliders. Right? So Arn is pretty pretty right. Yeah, we're going to want a sphere emitter. Okay. How are we going to get flames? Yep, we need an oscillator. We need noise. We could use a linear force, potentially. But for what I have envisioned, we just have a fireball moving around. We don't particularly need that. We need fuel. For sure, because there's going to be fire. Temperature. All right. We're learning. We're learning. So for this last thing, let's hop into Embergen. We're going to do our chest density thing again. Let's go ahead and get our moving shape first. So we're going to expose our position to the node graph. We're going to have an oscillator. And we're going to change this. It's moving way too fast because by default, my, my shape is 
broke on my, my thing. So this is what you would um, normally get when you plug it in. So we've got this, kind of weird, right? So, and for whatever reason, my, my base was set to the old one. So we've got this weird thing. So we'll do say 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. We've got this sphere moving through, and this is our z-axis, so we can change the base of this to have it kind of in the center. This is a fireball. I, I want it to have really large swathing strokes. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to go to simulation size, and I'm looking at the y-axis. So let's do something like, I don't know, 768. Like, I, I want a really big box, and then I want a pretty large... Uh, sim to play with too. And then I think in a rare case, I want to contain everything, which actually, well, let's not check these yet. We'll, we'll check these later so that you can see what they do. We're, we're going the sim tuition route, step by step. So we, we changed our bounds. They're the size that we want. We're going to keep editing our oscillator. We know that this is just a sine wave. If you change the frequency, it's going to kind of do some weird pendulum action. But we, we just want noise, right? We just want noise. So we'll, we'll add random noise here. And um, we have a lot more area that we can cover in Y. So in Y, let's do this. Let, let's change this. And so one thing is, uh, one thing that we can choose is we can choose, say, noise or um, uh, sine wave just for Y, just to see how far it's going to go at 100%. I think we could go a little bit farther. Now the thing is, is we need to disconnect this for a second. Actually, we might can do it while it's connected. So we can do set bounds. So we can right click. This is kind of an advanced thing, but you can set bounds. And we can say maybe we want to do um, 100 for our bounds. And so now unfortunately, that's going to kind of change our, our smoke and stuff to be outside of bounds. So maybe we need to bring these down to half which is what, like 12.5, if my math is right, to get it back to where it was, because we doubled the size of the bounds. And then uh, let's lower this. And let's see. Uh, okay, we need to lower my, my thing. So this is kind of where I wish we had better shape visualizations and, and things like that. You gotta see where it is outside of the bounds. Um, so let's do zero on X. Let's just change this. It looks like I'm at 20 something. So let's do say zero. Looks like we need to lower my base. Okay. I'm kind of fucking it all up. Yeah, there we are. There's where it is. So it's just outside of the bounds. Um, so this is, I'm falling off. Oh no. Okay. Uh, so why is that there? Transform this. Okay, so the base position there is 25 too, as we can see in the readout. We'll lower it. We'll say, uh, this is why I really do not like our percentage thing, because I don't want it to be 25. We need to change our base here. Okay, so now we're in the center. All right, finally, we're back. All right, so let's change this. So we've got Y moving back and forth. We can just do, say, noise. It's going to be pretty cool. And then um, we can add some of this, increase our base until it's within the range. Uh, can maybe keep our base here as, as it was, and then just kind of change the amount a little bit to give us some, some X motion, just so that we get some zigzag. So pretty cool. Now let's change the frequency so that it moves a heck of a lot faster. All right, so we're kind of moving in. Doing some interesting things and why, kind of going through, doing some cool stuff, zigging around. Now, remember, the only component that we have right now is just our density. There's another cool thing we can do, fill motion gaps in our sphere. It's going to fill in those gaps. So that's pretty cool. We're, we're probably going to want um, some additional uh, motion here. And we know that we can inherit velocity from our emitter. So let's just do 100. So cool, so we're emitting velocity. Now let's go ahead and add in our fuel. Let's do 150. Eh, let's add a lot more. And then let's go to our temperature and add that too. And we're gonna do replace since this is a moving emitter. And we wanna guarantee that our, our stuff is on fire. 
and we could do something even crazier where we could have it um, have a lot more uh, velocity inherence than this. Let's do like 300 so that it really kicks this smoke around. Now remember, we, I wanted it to kind of collide with some things. And so let's go to our force and we're going to turn on collision for everything. Now another problem is our smoke isn't dissipating. So we're going to go to combustion and have our smoke dissipate over time. I also want more detail. And we know that for detail, we can amplify the existing vortices. We're going to do 15%, right? Maybe let's do 20%. So we're amplifying those vortices. We've got more detail. I also, I want something a little weird where maybe, um, maybe we do have a little bit of buoyancy. So let's say like 50%, right? Um, but I want a lot more smoke weight. So I want my smoke to fall to the ground as it kind of does this stuff. So in that case, we technically don't need buoyancy, but we probably need a lot more smoke weight since we don't have so much smoke. Or we can add more smoke to increase the rate at which it falls down. But I think the easiest thing is to use our multiplier knowledge. And let's just type like a thousand. So this smoke is going to fall down. Maybe I want it to small down, fall down faster. Let's do 2,500 to really multiply against this and create a strong force. So this is pretty cool. So let's go in. I kind of want to change my smoke color. Let's do something like uh, a throwback to one of the very first Ember Gen presets. We'll do so like brown smoke. Maybe gray. Let's really kind of see uh, how this all works. And we'll do something cool. We'll add in maybe a point light. Show some light intensity. Kind of maybe light up the smoke over here red and then on the other side just for whatever reason we'll light it up blue I'm kind of making a little scene here it's kind of cool and, and remember this is all with simple primers the only thing that was difficult was kind of our oscillator I really want us to revisit this and make it a lot more intuitive because right now it goes against my sim tuition uh, um, philosophy but uh, otherwise you know if we took this position and say, uh, which is animated by hand, it's going to give us this motion. And one other thing, by the way, if you want, you can actually keyframe the motion by hand. If this thing is enabled, we could do this. So let's uh, expose our position to the timeline. We can move this. We'll move our thing. We'll move it over here. We'll move it some more. Move it over here. Move it some more. Move it over here move it some more, so on and so forth. And now this is going to do that motion for us from the timeline, and it'll automatically keyframe those. But this is just an easy way to kind of do this all procedurally, right? That's what the oscillator is for, is procedural. So really cool. Maybe we can have an oscillating radius too to give us some, some cool differences. So that's pretty cool. Maybe we want more frequency on Y. We really want this to zoom by. Probably don't want so much radius. Probably need more smoke decay because our smoke is filling up too much. So isn't, isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome? Right? We, we have gone through... And we've created a, a pretty advanced setup, but we've probably used maybe 10 to 12 parameters max on this. We've got our motion. That's plugging into our sphere, which is a component. We're injecting fuel, smoke, and temperature, which are our other components. Fuel and temperature combusts, right? That's part of the sim tuition. And forces... We're doing velocity transfer. That's going to make sure that it inherits velocity from the sphere. And then finally, we've got some uh, additional things that we're doing uh, by generating more smoke from combustion. We have um, smoke dissipation. And then under forces, we've got some buoyancy, really heavy smoke weight, since we know that smoke weight is a multiplier and our smoke density isn't very high, but we could make it higher if we wanted. We could also say replace, and that's going to make a really, really dense smoke. Um, 
and then we could increase that if we wanted. Uh, and we can also do this with fuel too. We could say we want to replace our fuel. And that's going to be pretty crazy. And maybe our thing is moving way, way, way too fast. So we can lower this. But it's pretty cool. It's quite awesome. So, And so King Designer says, how is the smoke not going out of the box in the simulation? I checked solid walls for everything. This is a new feature that's coming up in Embergen 1.1. So overall, that, that's sim tuition, right? That, that's, that's everything that I wanted to teach for now. So we've, we've learned that um, if you want smoke to rise, you have buoyancy. So that's temperature plus buoyancy. We know if we want smoke to fall, that's smoke weight and then the smoke density. So how much smoke is being emitted? We've learned that vorticity is an amplifier on current existing vortices, right? So the, the motion that wants to do this, your curls, you can amplify that for more detail. Force noise is a great way to break up your, your simulation, right? If you have, say for instance, let me, let me go back to Imogen just real quick. If we have this buoyancy, so this is my little default preset. All I have is temperature, buoyancy in the simulation node, and density. If we want to break up this shape, all we have to do is add noise. And now you suddenly have a usable simulation for something. Right? You might need to change the emission shape to a cylinder. It could be a character's head. It doesn't matter. It could be anything. Right? But those are all under defined under your, your initial conditions. Right? But without it, we just have a smooth line of temperature that goes up. And that's it. There's no disturbance. Now you could have a different thing to disturb it. Like there's there's so many variables for your initial things. So we could have it go around a collider and that disturbs it enough to where now we have vortices that we can actually see, right? And then we can go into our vorticity and then amplify that to be more detailed. And then we can have our force noise. And then we've got our sphere here that we're, we're colliding over. But now we have no dissipation. And then you, you just kind of go down the rabbit hole step by step we didn't have enough dissipation. So pretty, pretty cool. And then you can do post-processing, which is more complicated, where you can say you can dilate your smoke to make it thicker. You can uh, remove density as well. You can go into your shading node and uh, you can do like color ramps on your smoke. So you can have the beginning be really bright and the other parts be really dark and then kind of remap that smoke. Let's do like 30 or something. You can kind of remap this smoke to be different colors if you want. So it just kind of depends. So you can do whatever. It looks pretty bad because we have so much uh, post-processing here. Um, but, but it's interesting. So th there's so many things that you can do. We've learned uh, so much today about what sim tuition is. The simulation intuition. And just with these key parameters, you can make anything from this. You, if you rewatch this and you learn and you practice, you should be able to look at a simulation and know like the top five things that it's doing to do what it's doing. Everything else is just initial conditions and ongoing conditions. That's it. That's sim tuition. Knowing that smoke curls and then learning how to bend that to your will to simulate whatever you want. And then, of course, th there is the whole caveat of shading it properly, getting it to look good in the renderer, and all that other stuff. And then that's where I want us to have more intuitive stuff, where we basically have a material system in the future, where you can just say, hey, this is an explosion, let me slap an explosion material on it. Oh, this is steam, let me slap my, my steam material on it. Oh, this is uh, some kind of magic, let me have some kind of magic material on this thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, let me uh, turn off my camera real quick because I need to do something. All right, so turn off my camera real quick, kind of wipe my nose. Um, but other than that, in, in the chat, so let me, let me see. 
So we, we've got a little bit of time for Q&A. We're almost at two hours. We're at 154 minutes. Or sorry, one one hour and 54 minutes. So what do y'all think? Was this helpful? Did this teach you more than you've ever learned on a simulation video? Uh, what do you think about my sim tuition series? Do you think that I should go forward and make uh, you know, smaller pre-cut videos explaining more in depth the forces, have more visualizers and things like that. Like, what do you want? What did you think of the stream? I feel like this is way different than my typical live training streams where I'm like, change this and change this and change this and change this and change this. We, we need to take a step back and you just need to learn the core concepts of why the simulation behaves the way it does. And it's, it's crazy. And so this is, this is it. This is kind of the, the course killer, you know, you, you, like you do need courses, I think, and like more extensive training for like the minutia of the software, like, you know, importing a mesh and all the other stuff. But like, even that based on like my, my UI redesign and like, and this is like where my role in the company comes in a lot of the time, which we, we have a fantastic UI designer. Um, Vitaly, and then RXI, which is our UI programmer, fantastic jobs. And then we have our team that, you know, take the vision from me and Jason and, and Will and all these other people on the team. And, um, you know, like we, we all craft this vision, but ultimately Embergen is the spawn of my, my sim tuition mindset. And now if you look at the node graph going back, you can see that we built it with my sim tuition in mind. It's like, well, I have a shape, it's a sphere, and then I want to emit from that thing, so here's my emitter node, and then my simulation's gonna do stuff, and like that's processing all of my inputs. So here's a simulation node, and then you know I need to be able to process my volume, so here's volume post-process. I also need to shade it, so here's my shader after simulation. Then I have a whole scene, and maybe I can do post-processing on that, and then finally we render it, or we export it. And so Embergen is built with the sim tuition mindset but but now when you go in hopefully you can see it in a completely different way instead of ah there, there's like all these forces and like all these like weird things and and verticals i don't even know what that is all this stuff you'll be able to hop in and you'll go man i can click this node i can look at a couple key parameters read my tips uh, like the tool tips and go you know what i just intuitively know what that is because i know what the simulation does i know why it does it I know why it rises. I know why it falls. I know why my fuel combusts. I know that higher temperature means more combustion, cleaner fuel, more smoke, so on and so forth. Like you, you'll learn these things. You'll get an intuition. And then before you know it, you're going to be able to create incredible things. And so just with today, I've shown you so much stuff. So let me kind of read through some of the chats um, now that I'm, I'm kind of done talking. So uh, Jefferson Donald says, learning how to think about the process is more important than clicking buttons. So yes, this has been helpful. Awesome. Uh, no, I don't have presets for materials. That's a future feature that I want. Um, RNFX says, uh, you gave, uh, you gave us some tools, uh, that make simple simulation intuitively. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Um, Stefan Thompson, uh, nice to see you here again. I see you here a, a lot. Uh, says, uh, I would love shorter videos. They're always great for re referencing while working. Absolutely. Um, King Designer says, this helps uh, more than start to end tutorials. I love this practice. I love to practice this concept more and more. Absolutely. Best UI. Thank you. And thanks to the UI team. I mean, just, uh, and thanks to our whole team. The, everybody does a fantastic job. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, more videos for integration with other software, real-world scale, timing, how to export vertex colors from Houdini to use as mask, etc. Understood. We'll, we'll have things like that uh, as time goes on. Um, and then FXM says, I think it would be helpful to take single types of behavior and explore the various ways to accomplish that one behavior. Let's us absorb all these elements through a single lens. I actually, I there are additional ways to do pressure. Like, say if you have a sphere and you have pressure from your emitter, and then you take pressure from a point force and add, add pressure there. And then you, you kind of like turn one on or off or whatever. The results are going to be exactly the same. It's doing the same exact thing. And we saw that like with a line force, you can kind of achieve buoyancy uh, in similar ways 
uh, if it's, you know, masked with the emitter, um, cause it's an upward force too. And so th there's so many different ways that you can, um, achieve the results that you want and you can mix and match, you know, have things cancel each other out and, and stuff like that and, and have some really cool, uh, really cool effects. So definitely I, I would like to do another stream, um, that just kind of talks about, uh, maybe something like that where we can go into kind of sim tuition number two and just talk about, um, you know, maybe what we expect from forces, maybe why forces behave the way they do and kind of uh, focus in on the force component in particular. That would be interesting because um, there's more forces than what just meets the eye because buoyancy is a force. Uh, smoke weight is a force, but it's not an explicit force node. So it's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, Joseph says, uh, it seems well laid out when you explain it all with flip fluids and manifold. I forget what I changed before the sim is completed. I understand. Um, yeah. And it's, and our effect says, uh, instead of showing us how to make an explosion step by step, you showed us how to create smoke, fuel, movement with noise, the force, et cetera. And all those were very helpful. Absolutely. Like that's part of the, the sim tuition. I, I really hope that after this stream, y'all will be able to go through and just make all kind of crazy stuff because I've given you the building blocks to do literally 90% of anything you need right here, um, which is really cool. And so Brad says, I would like some demonstrations of a project from concept to finish, even a final render like a spaceship or action shot, building on fire, camera match moves and whatnot. That's very extensive. We kind of have something similar. There's a live, uh, it's like a torch tutorial on our YouTube. We do do a start to finish on that. You should go go check that one out. But other than that, uh, VFX shots can get pretty, pretty extreme. Um, anything else? La last minute uh, comments. A any any last minute comments? Oh, let, let me let me show y'all uh, Liquid Gen real quick. For, for the 68 people who have remained, we've lost half the stream. But y'all, the last stragglers will get a treat especial, which is uh, awesome. So let me just go ahead. Let me download it. And uh, let's just see. And uh, let me see what I can do real quick to load this. Bum, bum, bum. And so and while I wait, I'll let y'all uh, ask any questions that you want. All right, so let me turn off my Embergen and I'm going to launch Liquigen. And this should be the smoothest you've ever seen Liquigen because I have... Um, <laughs> yeah, I watch AVE. Uh, Ambergen is quite skookum. So, yeah, a treat especial. And, yeah. So, uh, looking back through the chat, just real quick, is there an ETM 1.1? Probably a month is my guess. And then, um, uh, Liquigen. So let's see. Uh, Good day says I, I left a payment earlier about adding a 3ds Max plugin. Look, the thing is, is Embergen, Liquigen, all this stuff is so much better as a standalone because we have full control over everything. Your experience and another tool as a plugin is going to be so garbage and so shit that I could never endorse that as a product. So that's my thing. Like we would have to build on top of all of their slow stuff and it's just not something we'll ever do. We will have an API where you can create bridges to like easily migrate scenes and things like that. That's coming over time and that might be like a paid plugin as a bridge. It might be free or whatever. You can give me money for it if you want. I like doll hairs, <laughs> which is uh, another AVE expression for dollars. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so yes, Craggy Dog says, have I missed much since it started? You missed everything. Um, so anyway, uh, let, let's go ahead and do like a quick uh, Liquid Gen showcase. This is brand new build. I haven't seen anything with it. Apparently, we got a lot of our denoising stuff fixed. So the final image is a lot higher quality. Um, so let me just uh, load a new project and, and let me load um, a thing. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. 
So, boom, 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 boom. Here we are. We're in Liquid Gen. All right, so last time I had a ton of graphics bugs. So here's a, a fluid box, right? We can kind of some tuition. What do we think is happening? We've got a box is spawning. There's gravity pulling this down, I'm sure. And then uh, the, the fluid simulation of advection, projection, etc. takes care of the rest, right? There's really nothing else. We could do things maybe like uh, surface tension, things like that. But sim tuition is going to apply to all this stuff too. It's going to be just as simple. So let's go ahead and get a good renderer going. Um, I'm going to navigate. Let me grab my Autumn Forest uh, 4K thing. Let me turn on shading, path tracing. Ooh, denoised results. Look at that. That's really, really cool. Let's change our radius here. Holy shit. We, we need some uh, 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 denoising fixes. But look how smooth this is. I'm sure the capture card will actually finally capture how smooth this is for real. Wow. I'm, I'm quite amazed. Now, we, we do need some uh, fixes. Let's see, denoiser. So without the denoiser, uh, we can see the, the full quality here. Um, which is just awesome. Super, super awesome. And just wait till we get caustics and everything inside the renderer, which is coming. We're going to have fucking real-time caustics, which is awesome. But, so yeah, let, let's change our shape. Let's do a sphere. And uh, emitter. Oh, no. Oh, wait. I do have continuous still. Let's do a continuous emitter. Look at that. It's really cool. Do you know noiser? This is my first time using it, so... We might need a little bit more, um, a little bit more love for it, but ultimately it is a lot better than uh, this noisy mess. Oh, explosion! Let, let's increase our, our size. Wow. Let's add in a box as a collider. Let's do like fifty and fifty, and then let's rotate it. Look at that renderer! Holy God! Oh, oh no! I'm hitting the floor. I forgot that there's bounds on this thing, at least on the floor. Amazing. Let's turn on my, my denoiser again. Man. That's really cool. That is really, really, really cool. And there was another thing. We used to be able to do it. It was like a, a guessing thing. Uh, we can also reflect off the primitive too. Which is really cool. So, look at that. That's just just so so dope. Um, we're gonna do more samples. Uh oh, that's gonna kill my my renderer. But yeah, this is this is really cool. So this is uh this is uh liquid gin. Oh, do we have velocity? Does it work? Can you actually transfer velocity now? I don't think so. It's kind of neat. And then the crazy thing is you turn off the path tracer and look at how fast all this is. I mean, it's just ridiculously fast. You also do reflect and refract more of a cheap option. So yeah, this, this is going to be pretty, pretty dope. Need, need some work. That's why liquid gen isn't out yet, but this is just, just really awesome. So lots and lots of uh, cool stuff. Lots of cool stuff. So, that's pretty much it. There's kind of a sneak peek on Liquid Gen. If you uh, want to support our development, um, we have a new new preset pack um, for Fire. We have a preset pack for uh, Clouds, and we'll have a new preset pack um, for Explosions soon. Um, you can find that at jengfxcom slash marketplace. Also, updating to the suite is a good way to support us which you'll get Liquid Gen and GeoGen, um, which let me show you uh, a cool thing from GeoGen that's coming. And so GeoGen will be here a lot sooner than uh, Liquid Gen. And so, but here's just kind of a, a interesting thing. Let's see. I'll just do this one. Let's see, open in browser. 
just real quick. All right. And then let me just show this. All right, GeoGen. Very, very soon. So there's a, a quick, quick teaser. So there's that. So other than that, we've got some, some more stuff coming up. GeoGen will, will be here uh, before you know it. And then LiquidGen will hopefully be here uh, soon, but we don't know when. No timeline. Probably not 2023. So that's my, my level of soon. We're talking Valve time here for like Half-Life and stuff. So um, not not quite soon, but um, we've got some really cool stuff for, for LiquidGen coming up. So what is it? How many developers do you have at Jenga FX? Um, we, I think we're at 21 people total. And maybe 15 to 16 of those are developers. So really cool. But yeah, LiquidGen's coming. Uh, GeoGen's coming. And we've got some really, really sweet, amazing stuff coming. Amazing stuff. There's so many cool things. Someone said, how much does it cost to update to the suite? I believe it's 100 bucks. And then, um, yeah, it's 100 bucks to update from Embergen to the suite. So you can contact uh, support at JangFX.com if you want to want to update. So pretty, pretty interesting. Um, yeah, so that, that's pretty much it. We, we went a little over time. Go back, watch the recording. Go go support us. Email support if you want to update to the suite. And that, that, that'll help us put more money behind LiquidGen and things like that. We're, we're putting as much money behind this stuff as we can. And uh, we recently hired two new developers for um, Embergen 2.0, which is our sparse solver. Um, we had an intern recently. And uh, job posting, real quick. Uh, if anybody knows, uh, like, an animator for a character who is um, uh, freelance or they're willing to do, like, a, a few-month contract with us, uh, let me know. Email me at jobs at JengaFX.com with your character animation portfolio. You need to be able to rig, most likely, unless we have to get a rigger separately. Um, but we need to be able to rig, and you need to be able to animate uh, for this uh, quick job uh, position. And so we, we have a secret project in the works, and we need a character animator. Uh, we have a character artist already. We have a concept artist. And um, if we need anything else, we will post something. But yeah, if you know anybody, please tell them uh, that we're looking for a freelancer for just a little bit to work with us deeply with our team. And um, it'll be pretty cool. So we've got some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, and so we need a freelance animator and rigger. So send them our way at jobs at jingfx.com. And then Raphael says, uh, what is GeoGen? Real-time terrain creation, real-time planet creation. Um, absolutely incredibly intuitive workflow. We're kind of doing the whole intuition thing. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And, uh, yeah. And then with liquid gen, it's going to be liquids. And so, yeah, it's going to be super, super awesome. So just really, really amazing. And, uh, and if you have the suite, so here's the thing, maybe I'll go ahead and announce it now. We are going to do a testers raffle if you have the suite we will uh put you in a pool for two different people and so it'll be through discord where we're going to slowly let people in to beta test geogen and eventually liquidgen we don't know when but for now geogen and so this will be in the coming months right and so we'll we'll announce the the raffle eventually but basically You'll go on Discord, you'll click a button uh, to react, and then we'll pull, say, 50 random holders who have the suite tag or whatever, who ha will have access to that, and then they'll get it, and then we'll keep on adding more. And the reason why we're doing it limited instead of everybody with the suite is we don't want uh, overwhelming feedback. We just want to let a few people in in stages, more like a play test. Um, and so... And then from there, we will uh, very quickly ramp out to a public beta and so on and so forth. But we're going to do that. So if you want to be part of that, too, it's also a thing for the suite. So because um, we'll 
we'll have some raffles for that. And then that'll all be hosted through our Discord. You'll have to be a part of the Discord to get access um, and enter like that raffle to get access to, to testing and stuff. And then that way it's pretty um, unbiased too. We have a bunch of studios that reach out and they're like, oh, we really want to try liquid and all that stuff. We're just going to do uh, kind of like a, a gated thing and then slowly let everybody in um, so that we don't overload our team with feedback. Um, so that's pretty much that. And I'm looking at last questions. Um, looks like uh, someone said, is there any trial version for Emergen? Absolutely. JengaFX.com slash try. Yep. JengaFX.com slash try. You can try Embergen. So really cool. So that's it. That's it. And uh, we'll, we'll see y'all later. Thank y'all for watching. And I hope that you've learned some sim tuition. Go open Embergen and start playing around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your support as always. We'll do some more sim tuition uh, in the future. So I will catch y'all later. Goodbye.